when I was there, you know, you'd say Robin and Richard Pryor, and right? Leno and Letterman and this and that, and you talk about this golden age that will never be duplicated. And by the end of the run, when I had this thing coming out, mm -hmm. I thought, wow, this age right here, they're every bit as talented, if not the bench is deeper than when I was here. Right. And when I would say that to anybody else, they would go, bullshit. <laughs> Tokyo tonight. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, man. Thanks for doing this. So this is it. This I is like it. it. I, I like it. I, I like it. it. Yeah. This yeah, is the closest I've ever gotten to Twitch before. This mm. is great. Really? You will get a notification of a restraining order in the mail, though. Okay. So just good. a heads up. Uh, it's totally normal. Good. good. Yeah. Everybody gets one. I see. Um, I, I just want to tell you, man, I loved the Comedy Store documentary so much. And it came uh, out around like a really great time. I think it was like mid to early pandemic. Yeah. No. Well, yeah, it was right that first fall. You yeah. Know, yeah. It, it, it was when they said we could kind of come out. But if we did, we'd get shot. <laughs> so, so it was, yeah. It was right during that period where you, you, you could go out, but. Were you, yeah. <clears throat> were you, were you, because I noticed like you guys were kind of like, it was like half masked, half not like, because in the beginning you had shot a lot of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. We had shot a lot and then we got shut down and then we were just editing for a while and then we started shooting again and then we did a whole, some stuff on the roof. And, that was great. And then, you know, we, uh, you know, it was one of those things where we thought, okay, it's over. No, it's not over. It's over. And, and then there was so many people thought, okay, comedy's over forever. Yeah, you yeah. Know? But uh, it, yeah, it came out in October of, I, I, want, I want to say 2020. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Did it change a lot of that when you had to like stop it for a while? Did it change a lot of what you wanted to do with it? Like how much did it change from its original conception to when you had to take a break to? A little bit, a little bit. I will tell you, you know, the, in, in, in a couple ways. One, I discovered new comedians that I didn't know about. Oh, nice. With, you know, that, you know, it, and I really wanted them to be part of it. And two, a few of the people that I really were, was, had made a big part of it, had gotten in some trouble. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and I wasn't, I was, wasn't allowed to use them in, in the documentary. Right. Wow. Which really was upsetting to me because they never had a day in court. They didn't yeah. have, there was never any police files or any proof or any habeas uh, corpus, aristis, kratis, uh, itches, crotches, or whatever, you, you know, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. They never had it, you know, and, and right, that yeah. bothered, but, but, um, you know, we were dealing with a corporation, you right. know, and, and the comedy store, you know, Pete, who's running it now, is very much a businessman, you know, and he has a crew of legal teams and, you know. Right. But um, uh, it was quite an interesting thing for me because I had lived, breathed, slept, everything the comedy store from the time I was not even 18 till almost 30. Wow. Every night of my life, you know, it was, it's all I wow. thought about was stand up comedy and, and comedy. And, and um, then for, uh, you know, a confluence of events and reasons, 
I slowly went away from it, you know, right. and and really went away from it in a big way, you know, other than, you know, I had several really good friends that were still comedians, but of my own generation and really never went back to the comedy store other than maybe once or twice from the time I was 30 till the time I was 55 maybe you know wow yeah and and um then i i was making this movie and a friend of mine was building my house for me and he kept telling me about this comedian bill burr that he liked mm -hmm. on youtube and i was right. like i don't know i don't know and he was like oh you gotta watch him you gotta watch him and i, I was like if if I don't know him, he ain't that big of a comedian. You know, <laughs> come right. on, let's be yeah. honest. And 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 uh, which was so far from the truth at the time because, like, the whole game board had changed, and I didn't even yeah. know it. You know, yeah. and and we were. I was making this movie with Kevin Costner and Octavia Spencer in New Orleans, black or white. And mm -hmm. Jason Sudeikis, we wanted Jason Sudeikis to play this part of Kevin Costner's lawyer and best friend. And at the last minute, he couldn't do it. And, wow. and I saw this guy, Bill Burr, that my buddy had, was, had kept talking to me about on Conan. Mm -hmm. And he, it was it wasn't an unknown comedian, but he was like a new comedian that Conan liked, you yeah. know. And he blew my mind, and I got Costner to watch him. And I just, as it worked out, he he was with the same management firm that I was, and and I got his number and called him, and I just said, wow. "Hey, you want to come down to New Orleans and do this part in this movie?" And he was great. He was like. Well, I'd have to cancel all these dates, you know, <laughs> these club dates, you know, yeah. and uh, and I'd have to do it like right away. I said, do I have to read or what? I said, no, just get on the plane. Wow. And, and he came down and he was great, you know, mm -hmm. and, and we got along great. And when we got back to L.A., I went and saw a show at the comedy store and the comedy store was on fire. Oh my God. Which I hadn't seen in years. I didn't right. realize how hot it had gotten again. And and then um I just something happened. I went back on Mark Marin's podcast. I had never done a podcast. I never even heard a podcast. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Mar I had had this book come out and Marin asked me to be on it. And he said, You want to talk about the comedy store? I said, No, I don't want to talk about the comedy store. He said, Well, you got to, because that's what I do, you know. And, <laughs> And, and I was like, but I don't, I don't really, you know. And he said, no, you're going to talk about the comedy store because you were there at the beginning and you're yeah. a big part of it. And so uh, I did. We talked about the comedy store. And about a year later, I Peter Shore just called me and said, do you want to do a documentary about the store? And I'd wow. never made a documentary in my life. <laughs> but I had known that showtime thing that was kind of based on the store which i didn't you know i had been doing some showtime shows right okay billions and ray donovan and they said you know is this something you'd want to be involved with because you're in the book a lot and, and i just i don't want to do a fake mitzi and a fake right jay leno and you know and and <laughs> um and as soon as he said do you want to do this? I said, you know what? I do. Yeah, I do. This would be the perfect way to tell that story because a I knew so many great stories from the original days that yeah. I don't think anyone knew. And I didn't know anything about the last 20 some years. Right. And I thought that would be interesting for me. Yeah. To, yeah. To, le to learn about Rogan and, and Burr and Whitney Cummings and, you know, and all that. Yeah. And what happened when Mitzi was sick and, you know, so I worked on it for two and a half years. 
you know, I just said, I, I'm going to wow. do it. I'm going to do it slow. You know, I was working on some other projects and, and then of course COVID came up, but I just wanted to do it slow and I wanted to do it right. Yeah. It was cool to see Annie Lederman featured on there too. That was great. Yeah. She, well, you know, she was to me the strongest or one of the strongest new voices I saw. And I, uh, I knew from the first time I saw her, I really wanted to, 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 um, uh, do this. <laughs> just, uh, I wish I was a little bit more tech savvy. Sorry, guys. I'm going to have to be because I'm getting into this all. But, I can help you out. But thank you. <laughs> I'm going to need it. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I, from the first time I saw her, I was like, we got to do something with her. Yeah. I, I think she's fantastic. It was cool to see a lot of the, a lot of the, because I was, I moved to LA in 2015 and I was hanging out. Carl above brought me to the store. Carl above oh, and man. Alan Steven brought me to the store. Yeah. That's for my great. first that's, time. And it was amazing. I love both of those guys. Yeah. It was a crazy night. I mean, as you would imagine, but it was a crazy night with them and it was, it was a lot of fun. And Brian Holtzman was there, saw him do his uh, uh, thing and whatever, but it was cool to see all those people that I had seen, you know, at the store when I was hanging out there and stuff like that on the documentary. Cause I wasn't sure which direction you were going. And I didn't know if you were just going to go pure history and, and build it up that way. But I liked the culmination of the decades that have gone by and like all the modern guys that are there too. It was great. You know, uh, speaking of Brian Holtzman, I love him, you know, uh, He's so funny, Bill Burr and I, and Peter Shore, we just produced a, a one hour special for Brian. No way. Oh, oh my yeah. God. That's going to be amazing. It's insane. I love him. He's the best. He's, he's, he's so good. So original. And yeah, it's, a uh, uh, it's really great. It's called last man up. <laughs> That's perfect. When is it? Where is it coming out? I don't know. I just finished it a couple oh. of weeks ago. Nice. You know, but it's really, it, it really came out great. And, he he's so funny and so raw. Yeah, and, and it uh, we really we really got him. You know, I shot him nine nights. Wow, oh. that's a that's a great one, way to do you know? it. Yeah. yeah. Did you combine any of the any of the ones together? Or did you really some just pick of them? The best but one? but really pick the best one and use pick up a few little pickups and stuff. Now, that's got. Is that the first time yeah. anybody shot that many like a, like a set that that? Because I usually think they do two, right? Two shows. Yeah, I usually do two. Nice, but I, I just wanted to really know his his stuff and really yeah. un understand the rhythms of it. You know, mm -hmm. I really, uh, I really like. I've been shooting Bill Burr the last few years, and nice. And, and I just travel with him a lot and shoot him a lot. And and then when the, the actual special, I know the show so well. I know where everything has to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best way to go. Anytime I've ever seen a stand up special and I can before I watch it, if it's produced or if it's directed by another comic and somebody that knows funny, it's always the best fucking special I've seen. Yeah, I think so. Like when you see Chris Rock direct a special. Or, yeah. You know, although I think Stan Latham directs great specials for, for Chappelle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, don't, I, I don't know if he was a comedian. I don't know either, but you're right. He does do great specials. What was the, so when you were, you were saying you got out of stand up, but did you, it was like a natural progression though, right? Like it wasn't a choice you made, but I feel like your career progressed. I was, right? I was voted off. <laughs> <laughs> I was off the profession. It was right. A letter came in to the house one day. <laughs> dear, dear Mike, please stop doing this. Sign stand up comedy. <laughs> <laughs> it's everybody that you were with at the store. You're like, Jesus Christ, I don't even know some of these names. The these entire, are open bikers. This is the entire profession. <laughs> <laughs> these are dead comedians signed this. Uh, half of the friars are on this list. Yeah, what the fuck? Wow, wow. Freddie Roman? Wow. That's crazy. Oh my God. That's hilarious. Did you did you miss it though? When you did you ignore did you even know that you were gone from it, or were you just too busy with directing and writing? And I was I was too busy, you know, that when when I first stopped. It really was one of these things where something had to give, right? Because not only was I doing stand up, I was making movies and I was raising kids, you know. And you know, I, I just had so much going on in my life, yeah. That, that I, I actually, um, 
I was actually, you know, just everything was spread thin and mm -hmm. I only had so much broadband and I thought, well, I'll stop for a while, you know? Right. And, you know, I was really close with Jay Leno and, you know, he, you know, never give up your aunt. You know, <laughs> never, mind her, never give up your aunt, you know, and, and, you know, just years went on and I gave up my act, you know, and, <laughs> and, um, and, uh, you know, there is something to be said that if you've always got your act, you've always got a way to make a living, you right. know, but I, uh, I think it was good for me because it, what it kept, you know, the making movies and TV and that kind of stuff is just like stand up. You, it's like this, and you know, you, right. you know, things are going good, and then you're waiting by the phone, and then you're sure someone's going to call, and they tell you they're going to call, and they don't, and you, you're going to get this gig, and you don't, and then you do, and then, and you know, if I had could have gone out and, you know going on the road for six weeks or eight weeks or two months, I probably wouldn't have hustled as hard as and wrote as many scripts and done the things that I did to, to, to get, stay in the game, you know? Right. But it's not, it's, and the thing is too, is like watching mind of a married man. I mean, I have um, them on DVD illegally, by the way, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, but, I, but um, I do, I don't know what, I don't know what to say, um, but I, I've got all those and stuff like that. But like, I think at the time when I was watching it, I didn't know that it was coming from a, a comedian, but it was so funny. It made sense when it clicked that you, you started out in stand up. Did, did you feel like that was the same kind of writing though? Cause you were writing, I mean, it, it yeah, well, very that much time stand up. I, yeah, well, that time I was doing stand up. Oh, you were still doing stand up when you were doing I, Mind of a Married Man? I was, and I was do. I had, that came from, um, well, and also Rich Scheidner, executive produced the show, yeah. ran it, he, and Bob Nickman, and, and Bob Saget directed it. And, right. And, and there were just a lot of comedians on that show. Right, right. Bobby Slayton. Yeah. And, and, and um, it was just all comedians do, working that show. And I had got, I got that show because I made this little movie called The Sex Monster with Mariel Hemingway. Huh. And it was about a married guy who fantasizes about doing a three way. And, and he gets his dream come true and talk, gets his wife to bring this little girl that works at work with her at the beauty parlor mm -hmm. to, to a three way. And, you know, he's downstairs watching ESPN and they're at, they're, they're going at it all night long. And, and, and before long, like she's sleeping with every woman in his life and, 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 and brings his, his whole life down. You know? Oh, that's hilarious. And, and it won HBO's um, uh, Aspen Comedy Festival best film. And I won best actor and it, it just got all that, you know, which was a real comp stand up. Only stand ups were in that thing. It was right. all about stand ups doing things. And um, that's how I got Mind of the Married Man. And because I was really part of HBO at the time, I had a HBO special, yeah. that kind of thing. And so it was really a little bit after Married Man, or maybe, maybe like in between the first and second season that I just had to kind of stop being a comedian just cause it, cause I was working, you know? Right. Yeah. I feel like that's the way you want to go though. If you're going to stop doing the thing you love the most, it's gotta be because there's, there's, you know, better shit coming down the line. Yeah. It, yeah. It, that's really what it was. You know, I went to London and I made this movie, the upside of anger. And, Great and, movie, and, by the way. Thank you. Love that and movie. It, it, and, and it just, it just was like, few years went by and then it's like I didn't miss it you know mm -hmm. it, 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 you, it, that thing of every night and when I came back to the and did the comedy store and I got you know really I think my friendship with Burr and with Mark Marin and and um, you know again I was always fr I stayed friends with Coulier and Saget my whole life I've been right those guys have been my two best friends, you know, for my whole life. And, and, um, Dave was my roommate for seven years and, wow. and, and 
but I but meet some of those younger guys and and I will tell you as an aside it wasn't just me when I would when I would bring back Letterman or Leno or Michael Keaton even Jim Carrey yeah and I, we would sit down and talk like we're talking now mm-hmm and I would talk to them about how big these guys were, right. how big Tom Segura is, yeah, how big Sebastian is. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of who's Sebastian, right? You know, what's a Segura? <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, I was like, hey man, until six months ago, I didn't know either. So, right. you know, it's just even though. Now, when you're inside of it, and again, these guys are now kind of popping over, you know, but like I had a lot, I have a lot of friends out of the business and I would tell them at the time, yeah, I'm, we're shooting this guy, Joe Rogan today. And this was 2020 and they'd say, who's Joe Rogan? Wow. You know, wow. and you think everybody knows who these guys are, Yeah, but they weren't, you know, the guys in the generation before that, like Rock, Chris Rock, and 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 you know even uh, you know Sarah Silverman or what, whoever, when when you would break, you would break a, across the board. But there came a new world where you'd break, and you wouldn't break to everybody. You yeah. break, you break to yeah. stand-up fans and and your own fans. And I would say to Leno, you know, these guys have podcasts and they, they're huge. And they, yeah, but buying it, buying it, that, that doesn't sell any tickets. <laughs> Jay, 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 he just sold out the forum. Yeah. No, he, no, he didn't. <laughs> no, he sold out the forum. Right. He didn't yeah. sell out the forum. <laughs> you know, it was, it was, and these podcasts, they don't make any money on them. I go, uh, yeah, right. He he does, Jay. He makes almost some of them make almost close to what you make doing the Tonight Show. Yep. You, you know, and and you know, and then I'd say to Letterman, "Have you ever been on a podcast?" He goes, "I don't even know what one is." <laughs> you know, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. You know. Yeah. And, and so, but but there were like 15 people that. I'd never heard of mm-hmm. that were legends, yeah, and they, and they were murderers. You know, they could yeah. they could just melt a room, yeah. Like the way when I was there, you know, you'd say Robin and Richard Pryor, and right? Leno and Letterman and this and that, and you talk about this golden age that will never be duplicated. And by the end of the run, when I had this thing coming out, Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, this age right here, they're every bit as talented, if not the bench is deeper than when I was here. Right. And when I would say that to anybody else, they would go, bullshit. There's (laughs) there's no way. They they don't compete with Pryor and Robin Williams. I'd say, oh, you don't think Dave Chappelle competes with, you right? Know, I was you, just know, you don't, Chappelle. you don't think Bill Burr yeah. competes with George Carlin, yeah? You know, and you yeah. know, you know, you don't think so and so. I mean, it's every, it just the list goes and goes. Yeah. How big Sebastian is, how, how deep Whitney's fan base is. Yeah. Bert you know? Kreischer, Tim Dillon, Tim um, Dillon, and oh. Tim Dillon wasn't. When I was doing the thing, he was just brand new. Right. He, he was just. Uh, I tried to get him to do an interview one night, and and um, he something uh, he he canceled one night. For, he was gonna he was gonna do a, the Comedy Store podcast, and he had to cancel or something. And then we were oh. done. COVID shut us down, so oh. I never even got Tim Dillon. I was wondering but, why he wasn't on. No, no, he was. But I was, I, I was crazy about the guy. You right. Know, I, and then boom, he popped, you know, and, but so just to give you an idea, you know, I mean, it was, 
it was mind boggling to me how, and this is not even just the comedy store, just in general, when you go to New York and, yeah. and you, and you see these guys out of New York, you know, Andrew Schultz and Sam Morrill, Morrell, yeah. Morrell and, 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 um, Rosebud Baker. Yeah. And, and Taylor Tomlinson's in New York now too. Yes. You know, and it, it's just, the bench is so deep that yeah. I, I couldn't believe it, you know? Right. And, and, uh, I, I, you know, so I've actually kind of, that's why I, I started this thing called standupworld.com, mm -hmm. which is, which is just really something I did just for fun which has become, <laughs> which has kind of taken over my life now. Yeah, man, it's great. It, it, thank you. It's I just we just launched it five weeks ago, and it's yeah. just. But but uh, there's also a Substack that I, I'm writing, and and and, but it's really um, the fun part for me is the essays on the Substack. You know, I love. Yeah, they're really good, man. Thanks, and and, and it's really, but but to me, it's about celebrating these comics that the bravery, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the, the kind of this, the freedom of, of this new world, you know, right. and, and what, what they're, what it eventually in its fruition is going to be, they're not going to be, the essays are going to be there, but they're going to be like little 10 minute documentary pieces like the piece that I did on Annie Letterman or on nice. Rogan or on Pryor or there, there are going to be little pieces mm -hmm. that you can watch or listen to or read, whichever way you want to consume them. Right. I, you know what I like too? I like seeing like the younger guys and like kind of your, you kind of bringing them into the fold and kind of reintroducing you know, your crew from the past to the, to the guys that are coming up now and everything. Yeah. I kind of like that. It's, it's bringing everybody back into it though. Like I've seen Jim Carrey now, like uh, popping up on more random stuff and just, he seems to be having a good time. He's um, having a great time. Yeah. I, he's having a great time. I, I'll tell you, and, and nobody knows this at all, but uh, you know, uh, we made this tribute to Bob, you know, we love Bob. Yeah. You know, he was, he was like a brother to a mm -hmm. lot of us, you know? Yeah. It, I mean, it, I was, I was traveling with Jeff Ross for the weekend and we were, we were, it was, we, all we did was talk about Bob and call Bob and give Bob shit and talk about <laughs> Bob more. And, and uh, I was texting and talking to Bob the day he died. Wow. And the next day, Jeff called me and told me that, he died in the afternoon and I thought Jeff was shitting me doing right. a bit, a bit on me, you know, and yeah. he was crying. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was, I just thought, okay, well sad, but no one's going to want to do any of that act. So what are we going to do? You know, right. I just, I just kept digging deep myself deeper into right. a hole, you know? Yeah. You know, and cause I just didn't believe it. I just, he, he was so happy the day before. Yeah. You know? The the, and, the post he put up on Instagram was pure joy. He was, that's where he was at. He was in love and he was happy. Yeah. And, but, um, so anyway, we, uh, it was, it was, it was a crazy time, you know, putting together the, the funeral and the memorial for friends. And then we did a little thing in the belly room at the comedy store. And then we did a big thing. And, you know, I, I filmed it all and wow. I just, I called everybody and, and I just, you know, I kept saying to Jeff, you know, he kept saying, what's the show going to be? And I was, it doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't matter with these kind of things. It just doesn't matter. Everyone's going to come. I, you know, I called Jim Carrey and Chris Rock and I called a bunch of people and a lot of them didn't show. And a lot of them did. I said, but the right people are going to show and it's going to be perfect. And his family was there and Jackson Brown and John Mayer were our, our house band and, wow. and, and, and Stamos and Ross hosted it. And, you know, 
Jim Carrey, you were talking about Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey gets there and, you know, he told me he was coming, but, you know, a lot of times at these events, Jim just comes and hangs out on, on the back wall and, and watches like, yeah. from, from Mitzi's and Robin's. And, and I, I, I told him, I said, Jim will just sit on that back wall and watch. He won't go up on stage, but if he does great, mm -hmm. Jim came out on stage with Jeff at the beginning and basically never left the whole night. Wow. And it was it was a magical night. And we filmed it. And I showed it to Netflix. I said, look at this. Just look at 16 minutes of this. And right. Robbie, Robbie Pra, the head of comedy network, he just said, This is remarkable. And they 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 bought it as a special. Wow. And it's, it airs the first week of June. We're doing a live event the last night of the uh, Netflix is a joke comedy festival. Oh my God. And, um, and we're airing it. At, and then it airs four nights later on Netflix. We're screening it at this live event, but it, it's just an amazing special music. Jackson Brown and John Mayer play the song, a version of these days together. That's just beautiful. Oh, wow. And then everybody gets up and sings "A Dog Licked My Balls," which was John, <laughs> which was Bob's closing song. Paul, Paul Rodriguez is just hysterical, and and Carrie and Ross and Chris Rock just did this jam. I've never seen anything like it because they're all in like couches, right? And they all they just jam with the band behind him <laughs> and Carrie just made this thing, you know, tell me about Bobby, you know, <laughs> and, then, and then everyone would just do a joke or, and, and, Jeff, Jeff, and Jeff, and Jeff Ross would just, just kind of brilliantly strung it all together. It was just, it was just amazing. And it's got so much heart yeah. and so much love and it is so funny i read about what was going on it looked like it looked like just a beautiful thing and i had no it, idea that you guys did a special on it that's amazing i can show you a little piece of it oh want. yeah please oh my god um can you pause your thing or not yeah no no no. it's fine i'll just keep yeah, talking yeah go ahead yeah okay, go keep, for it keep talking yeah. no I'll just say, i i got to meet him once and he was the sweetest guy i we were uh i i met him at a, a play i went to see spam a lot and he was there he's just chilling out in the audience and um, but before we went in, I introduced myself. I, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I get to talk to him. He remember my name. And then I ran into him getting drinks uh, for me and my girlfriend at the time. And I accidentally literally bumped into him with my playbill. And I was like, oh, my God, Bob. And he goes, John. And he grabs my playbill and signs Bob Saget on the front of it. And then I was like, oh, thank you. And then he was like, yeah, no, uh, no problem. And then I leave. And then when I went to go meet like Hank Azaria and David Hyde Pierce and all those people who were in the play, I was like, hey, could you guys sign this or whatever? And Hank Azaria grabs it and just looks at me and goes, Bob Saget. Like, <laughs> like for half a second, he was like, was he in the show? I had no idea. Like, where did this come from? And I was like, I wonder if Bob did that. He had to have done that on purpose because it was so big. That's really funny. You know, it's really funny. We were looking through. Uh, my wife was helping me look through all my stuff to to find, uh, you know, pictures and stuff for the, when we did the memorial thing. And mm -hmm. and I found this eight by ten that he had brought over one night from Full House. Wow. And like, like and like like I knew him years before Full House. Right. right? Yeah. And he did. He wrote, to Mike and Diane, I know how little you enjoy Full House, <laughs> and that pains me. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, my God. Yeah, he was just the, he was just the sweetest guy. I, I'd asked him to do uh, this show, and he wrote me the nicest, not right now, email. You know, you know, most people you ask to do something, they can't do it. They're like, no, or so-and-so is not available, or they kind of blow you off. He wrote this really, really lovely email that was like, uh, I, I'd be honored to do it. And, he, and he's like, but I'm really busy right now, and I'm just getting back out on the road, and I'm really excited. I heard he, I heard he died just to get out of doing your trip. <laughs> <laughs> right? 
That's the word that they were saying at the funeral. That's nice. That's right. You know what? That's that's good. It's a good run for this show. I've 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 now killed Bob Saget and Ed Asner. Yeah, uh, that is great. Ed Asner was the last. He, uh, this was his last interview, and people were like, "You know, you killed him, right?" Yeah, that's really funny. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh God, I don't need that." It was a lot of All fun. right, so th so this is this is a fun part. Oh great. That was good advice. <laughs> I only come out on sad occasions. If this, if this is the only way we're going to see you perform, I'm going to kill Eddie Murphy next week. <laughs> oh, my God. And the whole, the whole special is that. It's just wow, everybody bro. giving – just, it's just so – in bad taste and it's good taste and funny and it's just great everything just, you would have wanted yeah he oh he he would love it he would yeah. love it that's phenomenal man is it do you do you take a certain kind of because you you seem to have this ability to kind of bring people together and do that kind of stuff is that is that what you were like when you were younger when you started out did you have a click everybody that you kind of hung out with stand up wise did you have yeah. a circle of guys yeah, yeah I, I did we did you know, I remember one of the first things that I did that I really loved. I did this thing called the Detroit Comedy Jam and uh, it was for HBO with Howie Mandel and Paul Rodriguez and Dave Coulier and myself. And those wow. those are like my three or four best friends, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and it came out great. And, and it was really a great thing for us, you know, and I like that. I like that, you know, mm -hmm. I always like doing those kind of things. And, you know, uh, you know, even when I made the movies, you know, I was like putting great ensembles together. And Yeah. Yeah. Do you, There's a lot of. Oh, good. No, I was going to say, do you ever miss being on stage or do you, do you enjoy like putting together incredible shows more like being able to capture it through your eye and then share it with everybody else? It's a little more relaxing. Um, not being on stage because uh, there's mm. so much else going on that you have to concentrate on. Like in yeah. this special, I actually got up and said some jokes about Bob, you know, and said nice. stuff, stuff, not jokes, but, you know, and, and yeah. you know, that's something else you got to think about, which I normally don't have to think about anymore, you right. know? Yeah. So, so um, I, I don't miss it. You know, I don't miss it, you know, and, and a, a lot of my early movies and stuff, I had would have an acting role and a, and, and, and a part in and, and, and the, you know, when later when I wasn't, it just I found it just to be better for me, you know? Yeah. It just, it just, you know, I could just go to work looking like shit, you know, and not, <laughs> not have to worry about anything, you know, and, and, yeah. and, and um, it just, everything could be contrary on how everyone else was doing, right. you know? Yeah. And, and, um, but, uh, I don't, I don't miss it. I really don't. I, I, I'm, I, part of it, maybe I would, it, I'm so fulfilled creatively with everything else I'm doing. Yeah. And this, when I was teasing you saying, I got to learn all this, this new stuff I'm doing with uh stand up world, mm -hmm. you know, not that I'm going to be doing what you're doing with this, with the podcast, but I'm going to be doing a lot of interviewing and a lot of, yeah. you know, a lot of writing and a lot of, a lot of, um, you know, talking to comedians and, you yeah. know, voiceover stuff with these pieces. Yeah. So, so it's, there is a lot of performance to it again, you know? Right. So, yeah. so it's not like, where I have to have a set, mm -hmm. you know, but, uh, I definitely, definitely get that itch scratched. 
Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like the perfect combination. You get the pathos of doing all the movies and all the other creative kind of stuff, and then the element of comedy and your and the comedy brain that you have. You know, it 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 goes into everything you do now, which is nice because you did an HBO special. You were on, you know, network television doing stand up. So it look it feels like, I mean, from an outsider's point of view, looking at your career, it looks like you did everything you wanted to do stand up wise. And well, then I did branched I did. out. Yeah, you know, that was the, that's part of the reason why you know that I. I don't miss it. It's just because I just did it for so long. Yeah. And I, I did it at such a young age. You know, I was, right. you know, on the Carson show and on every talk show I could have been on so young and so many times. And I, I, I just, at, at that point where, you know, that, it, all that meant something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it, absolutely. With Stand Up World, it seems like you encompass everything from like books to vinyl to TikTok to. So, are you getting into it? You're watching like some of these TikToks and seeing the variance between like then and yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really am. I really am. And, uh, you know, uh, we've hired uh, three, now four people to come on and, and work and build it with us. But, um, and it's, like I say, it's just right now we just set it in the water to let it float for the last five or six weeks. Yeah. But it, and, and it's, it, you know, it's a five year plan and, and we're we're doing a lot of stuff with it. I mean, we're like the kind of stuff that w we did with the Holtzman special. We're going to do a lot of things like that for stand up world only where you can only see it on stand up world. Right. And and we're doing books and, you know audio books and stuff we're doing we're doing a lot of stuff but like what it's forced me to do like uh, i'll really give you a really interesting thing uh today we uh we were looking at stories you know not just doing links because we were saying okay this is like this part of it was like the drudge report where we just link you know click ag and an aggregator you guys know what an aggregator site oh, yeah, is, yeah. Right? you guys are in the business come on <laughs> <laughs> like talking to you okay you guys know right right and you just yes. dial up and you call you call aol <laughs> you sign up and, but but anyway uh, so we now we said okay I, let's we, we have to do our own stories and mm -hmm. so I was looking around Twitter and I found this tweet about these three stand-up comedians that did a show in a a bunker a underground bunker in Ukraine last oh, week. Oh yes, I read that oh, on your yeah. Right. Okay, so I said. Write a write a piece on that, and yeah. let's let's do some research. Let's find out who they were. Let's do and let's let's get them. Let's interview. And you know the the niche is it niche or niche? Uh, it's it's niche. Yeah, it's niche. I would, right? Yeah, yeah. Niche. yeah, it's niche. Yeah, it's niche. So anyway, I only have niche, nephews, so I'm not really sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah it's, it's niche. I'll leave the room for that shitty okay. joke, by the way. Okay. I'll excuse okay. myself. Okay. Sorry. Where everybody. did he go? I popped. Oh my god, look, it popped an earbud out of your ear. You're like, I can't Damn. stand this shit. That, that, that joke jumps ship. <laughs> my earbud jumps ship. Well, okay, that's enough. Um oh, so fuck. anyway, um hold on. This what is sad. No, oh. Siri, Siri jumped on. Oh, Jerry <laughs> went. Who said bad joke? <laughs> um, but so so anyway, it, you know the niche for stand up world really has to be stand up. Yeah, yeah. But that's a that's a really big world. It's a really big world, and it's stand up. You know, it's not comedy actors or sitcoms or comedy movies or. It's just really the world and the art and the craft, and it's grown so much. And the idea is, uh, I, you know, I like calling it, you know, you know, the bulletin board because it, that's what the main site is. But the 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 substack and where we want to go is to really 
you know, get people to write essays and, and really, yeah. and, and, and make these little documentary pieces. You know, right now we're working on one on Andrew Schultz, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, and just really kind of really take a deep dive into what a great art form it is. Mm -hmm. and, and I, and I, and I feel like, you can't do that without combing through Twitter and Instagram and, and, you know, and it, it's funny you asked that because the, an, another thing, uh, Howie Mandel and I want to do this show and uh, about young comedians and guys in their teens, you know, comics, not guys. But, Damn it. You said young comedians and I was like, go on. And yeah. <laughs> you know, and I was like, no, no, no. I'm like, no, just I'll like, rip. Yeah, okay, shave. <laughs> uh, no, but really, like, a kid, because there's a bunch of people started as kids, you know? Yeah. You know, and, um, but we were talking, and he, we were talking about these TikTok comics, and, and I said, you know, at one point, I said, yeah, but those aren't stand-ups. No. They're, the yeah, the little kid that chews on his mother's leg, that's funny. But you know, first of all, eventually the, his mother's not going to have a leg. Right. Okay, so I haven't seen it. You know, but 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 I, I'm talking about the art of stand-up comic, being yeah. in a club, being with a microphone and with an audience, and going up raw and learning the the craft night after night after night. You know, yeah. you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. You know? And and that's a great art form yeah and um i mean i, I have a, a really good friend rich scheidner who i was telling you about rich was on the show he's a great yeah, guy he's amazing him. great guy he's an amazing guy and he's so t you know in his day i have to say he was he if he were doing it now he would be an andrew schultz or a or a mark norman or a, yeah you know, he would he would have he was so prolific and he was so brave on stage and he just, he could do it on, he could do two hours and he, he could just go on and on. He, he was amazing, but he yeah. also, he writes about stand up comedy so well. Yeah. And he, he also, he understands the history. You know, Wayne Fetterman is great too. Oh, I love Wayne Fetterman. Wayne's great. Great guy. But, but Rich has really, studied the first comedian mm. you yeah. know artemis ward it was his name oh yeah his name was arch Armand, artemis ward and this was like in the 1860s i mean the, he, he was abraham lincoln's favorite entertainer holy shit okay this guy got to go to the white house and try to make abraham lincoln laugh in the middle of the civil war you want to talk, you want to talk, you think you think it's tough to play a Ukrainian bomb shelter <laughs> right but so you know so rich wrote a screenplay it's a fantastic screenplay about that and he's writing the book on that and like things like that is what I want stand up world to really all, not only or or do a whole piece on flip wilson who young audiences don't even know who that is He's great. Yeah. We have a great, uh, a kid, this kid, Dustin, that's 12 years old, that interviewed John and a ton of big stand up comics. 12 years old, trying to get into stand up just from his perspective. He's been talking and absorbing as many as he could during the pandemic. We definitely yeah. should introduce. He's a great oh, kid. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if we do this show, we want to talk to him. Yeah. Dustin Pichel, I think his name is. He's a great kid. We're supposed to have What's his last, his last name? Is Dishell? Pichel. Uh, Pichel. Pichel. Oh, Pichel. Um, yeah. It's like Nick. You know, you like it, but touch the knee shell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what I love about standupworld.com too, and I don't know if this is an area you're going to focus on too much or not, but I like some place to go to just to, to kind of distill the bullshit. Because if you if you just read Twitter, stand up is a terrible place. Comedians are horrible to each other and to people, and uh, and you know, and it's all the kind of wrong information. I've seen a couple articles on standupworld.com that kind of. Uh, uh, you know, dissect that kind of shit and go, here's what actually happened. You know, here's what's going on. And I, and I love that kind of stuff, man. There was um, an article recently in the Hollywood reporter. I don't know if you saw it 
Um, Dan Pasternak was hosting a panel at South by Southwest with John Cleese, Jim Gaffigan, and yes. Dolce. Yeah. And I read it at like three o'clock in the morning. It was posted or whatever. As soon as it was posted, it was bullshit, man. Like 100% written by somebody who doesn't understand comedy, really just wanted the clicks and wanted there to be a concert controversy, you know, said the audience was cringing because, you know, uh, John Cleese, they were making jokes about colonialism and all that other stuff. And I kind of just called bullshit on it. And I was just like, if I'm like, first of all, this reads funny. Like everything he was trying to say that they said at the show was hilarious. And I'm like, if you don't understand comedy and if you don't understand comedians, then why are you writing about it? And I like that your site would be the kind of, you know, uh, antithesis to that. Yeah, well, that's great. If you ever have any, see anything you want us to post on there or you want to post or if you ever want, you know, if you want me to link up all your sites, your your stuff on there. Oh, I please. Will, you know, that'd be I great. Mean, that, that's, you know, that's I'm just getting everybody to show me what I what to put on there, you know. Yeah. But, but like things like that, like I saw this one article talking about down on why comedians aren't funny anymore. Yeah. And, then, and then I read it. I said, "This is that was just such a clickbait, clickbait art headline." Because you then you go in on and on about how great Russell Brand is and how great <laughs> Ricky Gervais is, and right, yeah. you know, why would you put a you know? And and I, the title of our article was "What a shitty article!" This what a <laughs> what, what, what a clickbait fake title from a guy who really loves some great comedians right you know? yeah and, and um but it's really it's just like i say it's it's really you know right now i mean i've just been so inundated with so many other things but i would say in the years to come this if if i could this this eventually will be all i do is this 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 That's world right. this stand-up nice. world stuff you know, it's because it's really two or three sites, you know? Yeah, yeah, yep. man. That's phenomenal. Were you, you were, I know you'd hung out at the comedy store primarily, but were you at the comedy cellar back in the day too? Were you in New York a lot or not really? When I was working, when yeah. I was working, you know, but uh, what, that's how old I am, John. I mean, seriously, when I was really a, a, a stand up guy that needed to work out, like to do like shows and stuff, and when I was in New York, the yeah. comic strip and catch rising star and the improv were where you'd go there what the cellar wasn't like a club even then it was it might have <laughs> just been getting started wow. do you know what I, do you know yeah. what I mean? yeah. and, and then you know I, I was doing uh the movie rain over me with adam sandler i and, love that movie thanks and, and we we went in the, down to the cellar a couple nights you know and we'd hang out with guys we knew and 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 um and uh you know and then, or i'd be there for you know work and i'd go to the cellar because saget was on or yeah. or 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 you know people friends of mine were there but but i uh, never that when i was jumping up or like if i had to do a show mm -hmm. And I had a six in the day when you had to get a six minute spot ready. Yeah. You'd go try to do three yeah. clubs a night. I'd do the comic strip, catch a rising star and the improv. Now I have to ask you this because I think we've had people talk about the differences between these two clubs back in the day, catch and the comic strip. Everybody always used to say one was the cool one and one was the nerdy one to hang out. Did you have that experience with those two clubs? I like the comic strip, you know, because okay. By the time I was that, the younger guys hung out. I, I think felt more at home. Guys like Seinfeld and Riser and and Larry, Larry Miller. Miller. That was their home club, and those were my friends. They were right. my age, and like older guys like David Brenner and like the and Richard Belzer and those guys. The old guys, you know, would that that was their club, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, and. Um, you know, Rick Newman was a great guy and he gave me spots, you know. Yeah. But when I was in town. And sometimes and a couple of times I would go up at, at Danger Fields, you know. But, oh man. But not 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 you know, that was you didn't really work out at Danger Fields, you know. Right. It, but 
but the comic strip was for guys my age and you know and also at that time i would i remember thinking like the comedy store in la and the comic strip new york was almost like marvel and dc you know (laughs) it was it was was like a two different worlds right and and it would be like we would be like visiting and you know gotham city from metropolis or something right you know and now you're speaking my language you know exactly but but uh but those guys were great and and the people that that ran it richie and bob and and um and uh I'm blanking on the guy. He just, he passed. Oh, uh, um, Lucian. L- Lucian. 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 That's who it was. Yeah. Lucian. Yeah. And, and, but, but those weren't really my, my clubs, you know, that was just when I was there. Yeah. When doing, you were hanging out. When I was doing something else or working or getting ready to do like when Letterman was there in New York. Right. You know? Ah, okay. Yeah. And, and uh, that kind of thing. Um, the, were you a part of that whole improv comedy store mix up back in the at, at that time? I was a comedy store comic. I was so such a comedy store comic that it was that was in a time when you and I wasn't like big enough mm-hmm. when that when that split came. Yeah, that you could do both. Right. You know. You know. I mean, really, probably at that time, the only one that did was Leno. Right. Did he really? That, see, you're yeah, you're close with Leno, and other comics have had different stories on this show when they've talked about it. Did he really fake getting hit by a car? To yeah. End the whole thing. He really did. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's insane. Who who drove the car? Who orchestrated that? Well, no, Biff Maynard was driving the car, but Leno. It all was one of those things where you smack the car as it goes yeah. by, and you go yeah. Leno down. Yeah. No. It, yeah. It was. The, it was great. That's incredible. Tom Dreesen tells that story. Great. Oh, really? Really? We haven't had him on yet. We got to get him on. Yeah. He would be great. He yeah. Would. He's fucking awesome. Um, I love the other thing I wanted to tell you about your comedy store documentary too. And I think this helped a lot of us. Cause when I, I would have talked to the comics that were on the show about it, it was cool to see the decades go by on the show, but how in each decade, everybody thought, Oh, this is what's going to kill comedy. And then all of a sudden it would boom back up because it really felt like COVID was going to be like the end of all of us performing, going out on the road. But after watching your documentary, I was like, no, nah. they said it was going to end, you know, in the seventies, they said it was going to end in the sixties, you know, the whole thing, the eighties, every decade seemed to have this thing that they thought was going to kill comedy. And then it always rose back up. Well, I'm glad you said that. And the other side of it that I think was really interesting for me to see and and was one of the things that as a storyteller that I latched on to right away was how there was always a new technology Mm. that came along whether you know it was it's that's why I started with the tonight show you know and then it was situation comedies and then it was our specials on cable television when cable television came out Mm-hmm. And, th- and then it was, you know, um, streaming and then it was podcasts. And and, you know, I, I, I really think there's a new stuff. There's new stuff coming very much in line of like, you know, people building their own channels and, and worlds. And, and, you know, you know, you, what I think what you're seeing with what Rogan's done and what what Segura's done and what you're doing, you know, what we're doing right now is it, it's really not even a podcast anymore. This is your, it's a, as I was watching your opening of your show, this is a television show, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's, it's just, it's, and, 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 you know, it'll, there'll be a new technology that come along and always new ways for you to adapt that into. And I, and I, and I feel like, and that's part of like in this uh, piece that we're making on Andrew Schultz, who I don't, I don't know Andrew Schultz, (laughs) you know, right. right. This is uh, from afar. So, you know, you see these guys, not who's a great comedian, 
but has to have so many other skills now. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I oh mean, my look, God! Yeah, look at, look at you. You have to be a broadcaster. Yeah, you have to be a promoter, a marketer. You see these comedians now; they have to learn how to graphic design. Yep. You know, yeah. and 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 everything changes. You know, when I used to go out on tour, you know, we would go, and we would, you know, I sag it and. And Shanling and Coulier and Bruce Baum and I, we all we all broke on a show called Make Me Laugh. Oh my God! This yeah. was so long before you guys, but mm -hmm. but this show hit. You don't know how big this show hit. Right. This show hit huge because <laughs> because they took over the American Embassy in Tehran. Okay. Right. Right. And and it's everybody was watching the news for a year year and a half and it was people were so sick of the fucking news right yeah. and then this guy george foster put this strip show on with three comedians trying to make contestants laugh we shot it at ktla we shot five shows in one day mm -hmm. and he sold it out across the country and they put it on opposite the nightly news at 11 o'clock wow. and this is this was truly before there was 24 hour cable there was maybe cnn mm -hmm. right right yeah and the show was a huge hit and it was a hit it might have been the first version of a niche you know john's nephew in the other room show <laughs> you know that, that, that nobody's listening to but we became we were so we a bunch of us of uh, comedians, Gallagher, wow. Shandling, we were on every night. We I, I did 40 episodes. Oh, wow. Shandling did 50. You know, we I we I, I was 19 years old. Wow. I would I could wow. go and I could sell out comedy clubs. But we started the comedy club boom. Yeah. We, yeah. we were the group that it started with Mark Ridley's Comedy Club in Detroit, and then it went to, I mean, there was the New York and the San Francisco and the L.A. showcase clubs, but Mark Ridley started a, a, a headliner with a local and a middle act, mm. and then Cleveland Comedy Club, and then there was Atlanta, and 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 it was always Vic Dunlop, and it was, they were wow. always Make Me Laugh comics. Because mm -hmm. we were on five nights a week. And if you were on, you were on all the, you, you did the whole week, right? Wow. Yeah. So if you went to a town after that, you packed the place, yeah. right? But what I was yeah. saying, well, the reason I gave you this whole wide lineup was we worked our asses off because we had to get up. You'd get to a town and every day I was there, I had to get up and do morning radio. Rough. Okay. And after morning radio, I would do noon television, local te <laughs> lo new local television. Yep. You know, and newspapers, you know, and and then I'd, you know, have to do a show at night. Right. But and we had to work so hard at doing press to yeah. sell to sell those seats. But and there was just so many other things of just being a comedian. Whereas now I feel like you see these comics and they don't have to just be comedians. Yeah. As, as you know, they have to have you. What do you do? You have a podcast, you have a, you have podcast, you social media pages, my website, um, uh, fucking, if I'm writing for some, I wrote for Newsweek over the pandemic just to keep, keep going. Um, you know, all, yeah, it's never ending. It's, I'm so glad to hear you say that because I literally asked Tom, I talk about that every night with every guest. We talk about the amount of shit we have to do graphic design. I have like 50 fucking apps on my phone for graphic design and gifts. I have to make the shit for the flyers to be sent out for the podcast i have to i'm literally as we're speaking editing like not i'm, I'm not doing it now but it's downloading 
one of the last episodes. I, of the I, I noticed. I noticed you weren't really listening, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I was like, I was like, oh, don't fucking say it like that. No, no, no. It's it's processing. I don't have any more to Here do. Here it is. So am I. T-shirts. So am I. T-shirts. <laughs> I have to do the T-shirts. I get no, but it, but but that's what I'm saying, and it's but it's a lot. It, there, there's but there's something great about it too. There's something great about yeah. it too because. No matter what the technology comes along, all the content you're making is going to work on that and work perfectly for it. Right. Yeah. You know, point. and that's not, the, you know. It's having a tool belt with different we, varieties of tools in it. We weren't free as comedians for a long time. The rappers, the musicians, and independent filmmakers which is why I let stand up go because I got into filmmaking and independent filmmaking and I could make little small films. Yeah. I could just go raise a bunch of money and make a little stupid film. I made the sex monster for $600,000. Wow. You know, wow. and, and, you know, I made it for a price. There's just no way to lose. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. And, and, and I had to learn all kinds of other skills, but, and, but we weren't free. As comedians, you had to get the corporations to anoint you. Yeah. And it wasn't until, you know, everything really finally worked out with the internet and podcasts and all this, that you could really say, you know, and I always say the biggest difference between when I was at the comedy store and when I got there to do the thing is we would walk in on a Thursday night and we'd go to the front desk and say, who's in the audience <laughs> who's here right and none of these people ever bother to do that because right. they they don't give a fuck right yep they yep. don't care who you know they care okay the room's full that's all i care right. <laughs> you know they're, they're not looking yeah. to get discovered they're right. not look they're not looking to get discovered you know it, it's just it's incredible do you, what was the point? Do you remember a point in your career from starting doing stand up to maybe feeling like secure in it? Like, oh my God, I got a mat. I'm, hope, like a I'm hoping it's next week sometime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. I feel like if, that's if you know, get there. If you get there, yeah, you, it won't be a good thing. I'm so, I, that's, I was just about Agreed. to say, whenever I do ask that question, I, we asked Marsha Warfield that same thing, and she said, it never goes away. You never feel secure, you know, and if, as soon as you do, you bomb, you're out, it's done. Well, it's not even that you bomb. It's that you stop caring. You stop creating. Yeah. You right. stop the, everything good you've come up with, every good idea, doing this show, you know, every good app you found, every good joke you wrote is because you needed to. Right. Yeah. Okay, I'm telling you, if, you know, I have a really good friend, you know, I, I'm 37 years in AA, you know, oh, wow. Great, and, man. and he, he says, he goes, oh, he says to me, I just want to get so close to God. I, I just want to get so much money that I don't need God anymore. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, 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 and the truth is, you never get it. This, you never get enough money. You never get enough success. Right. You know, and you yeah. never and you never get enough success that you feel like, OK, I'm not sh I, 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 they're not going to take this away from me because the people that do get that, mm -hmm. they either quit or they self-destruct or they just keep doing the same crap over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah. it becomes you very know, homogenous. You know, one of the things about Chappelle that I love is if you ever spend any time with Chappelle, you understand he does not feel secure that it's going to last forever. Right. Yeah. And it's the same with Burr. Burr says shit all the time. You just want to go, what are you talking about? You're doing great. Right. Yeah. He goes, yeah, but they're going to take it away. This, you know, this, uh, this thing, this is fleeting. Yeah. You know, you just you have to be okay with the fact that it's going to go away or it could go away you're always running uphill if you if you're looking to be great 
Yeah. And that's that's humbling as shit because I remember when I was younger, before I even started doing stand up, listening to guys like like Tim Allen and all those other people who would they would. I remember Tim Allen saying this at one point because, you know, we had the number one book, the number one movie, the number one TV show all at the same time. And they were like, how does it feel? And he was like, I'm just trying to enjoy it because it's going to be gone. Like none of this shit lasts. I learned but, it doing stand up. By the way, he's another one of those guys I didn't mention him in that pack with all of us. I, he's one of my oldest friends from the very beginning oh, yeah. from Detroit. Wow. And, and he's a, a perfect example of that because he's always said that and it's never gone away. I think about it all the time. But it's never gone. It's always I remember when you had that, you know, Time magazine, this, this, and, that, and, it, has, and it never goes away. But he's, right. he's never felt that he he was appreciated. He never, you know, hold on one second. OK, sure, sure. Yeah. You got it. No, keep talking. OK, do what he says. <laughs> he's gone, but he can still hear us. Uh, did you get everything said? Well, Dan, oh, wait a minute. Actually, the more said something about the T-shirt, the more. Thank you for watching one and go to yes. dystopiatonight.com. You can get your own T-shirt <laughs> and you can wear it proudly. He's like, I don't like it that much. No, you know, you know, you know what? I, I, I had to run and get my laptop and then I never plugged it in. So I didn't want it to. Oh, um, but, but, uh, but, but, um, but, you know, Bob Saget, one of the things. And a lot of people said this on the uh, the uh, tribute. Bob never thought he made it. Really? Bob really? never. Bob never would have thought he he would have been so blown away by wow. all the attention that he got from his when he died. Right. Because he never thought he was successful. Man, that's. That breaks my heart. That's why we got to start doing shit like this, like that for people who are still like, it kills me that like everybody sees all this adulation or doesn't see it. You know what I mean? But we it's going to have memorials for living guys. <laughs> yeah. It's all got to be, you got to do with the Irish do. Don't they have like Irish <laughs> birthdays or some, what is it fucking called? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what it's called, but you know, the Irish do it, don't they? Or do they just yeah. drink? I don't remember. Yeah, I think they just drink. Yeah, they just drink. All right. Well then let's just do that. And that'll be much better. Well, you can, I'm sorry. I just told me you were an A and I'm like, let's have a drink. <laughs> yeah, thanks, I'm such a fucking piece of shit. Hey, why don't you send some mean. heroin over here? <laughs> yeah, just let uh, me go down way faster. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on with me. Oh, fuck, man. Um, it's been, I mean, I, I just, you know, it's, there's like guys, so there's, in my mind, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, there's a lot of like, I feel like comedy historians. You know what I mean? Like people who have either done shit. You absolutely, obviously, Paul Provenza, I feel like, yeah. knows a shit ton. Um, the Green Room, great show. We just had him on yeah. not too long ago. He's a great guy. Um, uh, oh, my God. Am I, uh, Rich Scheidner. Um, yeah. And who was the one? Oh, and do you know Richard Zoglin? Oh, sure. Uh, he yeah. Wrote book, he wrote a book about, yeah. Comedy at the Edge. We had him on, too. Yeah. One of my favorite books. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and also, I don't know if you know um, uh, Franklin Ajay personally. Yeah, I love Franklin Jr. Okay, I try, I try to get him on the documentary, but he lives in Australia. And, he does, and and we couldn't fly him in. Oh man, I got he's I got to open did, for him. And did uh, you get him on your show? Not yet. I'm trying because oh, let me know if you do. Will you? I'll bring. You want to come on Absolutely. with us? Yeah, I'll let you know when you can come on. I, I I don't want to take. I, I'd rather watch. All right, but, but, but I will. Let... I, I love that guy. Me too. And he had a book that I, when I was a kid, when I was in high school, because I always wanted to be a comedian. That was like it was either the, this or cartoonist. I think was the other thing I wanted to be, and I, um, I just didn't intend on making any money. Uh, but uh, they had he had a book called Comic Insights, and I fucking carried that thing around with me like the Bible, because uh, everybody was in it. How old were you when you started being a comedian? Twenty. 20? Wow. Where? Yeah. Uh, I started in New York. My first show was at Caroline's. Wow. Yeah. And I did five minutes and I, I, I did, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, when you do well or comics do well the first time and it's like, oh my God, this is fucking amazing. And then literally I went back up uh, at another club and they were like, can you do 10? And I was like, fuck yeah, I can do 10. And I fucking bombed so yeah. bad, <laughs> but I still wanted to do more. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. it was great. That's really awesome. Yeah. Did you ever did you ever know a book called um The Last Laugh? I have it. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was my book, the one that really got me like juiced. Oh wow. 
That was uh, is that that's the one with that follow Rick Lewis around, right? And Jay Leno and, and Jay Leno, Robert yeah. Klein. Yeah. No, actually, a- more Robert Klein than anyone. Right. Do you consider him to be yeah. the first modern stand-up? The one, like, you know what I mean? Like a lot of con- a lot of guys kind of because Richard Zalkin wrote a book about Bob Hope being the first stand-up, which I never really considered. Like the first true, like I, I didn't, I didn't think yeah. that really was the case. But, but in my head, Robert Klein was like the first one to kind of do it, um, you know, uh, confessionally. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I, I think prior, prior was at the same time too. That was just, I mean, I loved Robert Klein. Don't get me wrong. Right. I, I, he was one of my fa- absolute favorites. Right. I love, I loved him. You know, and. Um, He's a really great guy too. He uh, he acted in that movie Rain right Over Me. And it was so yeah. great, great yeah. to work with him. He was phenomenal in it. Yeah, I love him. But uh, but uh, I I think you know I think I I think Richard Pryor and really broke the door open for that. I didn't realize know? they started at the same time. Yeah, oh, okay. I, I think maybe maybe prior even a little earlier wow okay but i could be wrong yeah i always thought I'm, I, yeah i mean that makes i guess that makes a lot of sense like prior obviously i think Chappelle is kind of like right it's it's gonna it's it's hard to say that prior is still the like everybody says prior is the best and everybody knows why they say prior is the best but Chappelle is like i don't know man he's like right there he's like right on the edge of that i don't know if you agree or not but i do yeah yeah, it's crazy watching Chappelle do anything at this point, and it's. Uh, I do well, and I but I also I also think Burr is. Yeah. Is is uh is uh he, he's amazing. Yeah. He's so prolific. Uh, his new special uh, at Red Rocks is just amazing. Oh, I've, wait, where is that? Yeah. When's that one? Comes out in Ju- no, not so no, no, not yet. It comes out on Netflix. I, I I just did it with him. Oh, nice! I, I, I directed and produced it, and, and it's just, I just finished it last week. Oh, fantastic! That's oh, like, wow! It, it comes out in June. It, it but it's he's he's unbelievable. He's unbelievable. Yeah. He shot it at Red Rocks, and uh, we shot it at Red Rocks, and he he did two nights, sold it. Uh, you know, I think it's eight thousand people, mm. and and he, you know. You did a brand new hour, and I think he's got another new hour already. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. Wow. He, but but he it's so. It's he it's a, this is a whole other level for him. He's just him. I think him and Chappelle and and Richie R- Ricky Gervais, Gervais. Oh yeah, Gervais. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so, coming out with something new too. Yeah, I, those two, those three are the top the top of the heat for me, you know? Right. Is there anybody that you wish would come back to stand up that has been gone too long? George Burns. <laughs> <laughs> I know I look, I know I look like a necromancer, but yeah, I can't yeah, make that yeah, happen. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I, I just, I, there's so many, so much room. There's so many new guys, man. I, I, this guy Mark Norman, I, I oh, just love, I love him. Uh, I, 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 you know, uh, uh, Yamanika Saunders. Oh yeah, she's amazing. I saw her open for for the the the, uh, the bumping mic guys in Vegas, and I was yeah. just like, was blown away. And you know, um, Jessica Kirsten is. I don't know if you know. Oh, her. she's amazing. I love her. Fucking god, she makes my like sides hurt you know like yeah, i love every her. time yeah, and, she's and the best paul, paul verzi oh yeah paul verzi's great too yeah paul verzi got me my first manager who stole oh, money from me oh really <laughs> yeah you, you can get that. it back from him <laughs> <laughs> i know he's got it now right i yeah. love paul verzi me too his new special is unbelievable really good very very good it's it's so good and and uh, i what just am- feel like people like that are just coming on so strong and and yeah, that that I don't need anyone else to come back. You no. know. Yeah, that's a yeah. good point. Can I tell you one of my favorite? Paul, I think about this joke. It's Paul Verzi's all the time, where he's talking about sports collectors. 
And he's like, he's like, yeah, downstairs I got. The, I don't know your name. I'm not a sports guy. I'm I'm assuming that's why you threw the Marvel DC reference. At me before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, he's not gonna get baseball, but yeah. um, but uh, but he has some sports guy in his basement in a glass case. He's like, could you imagine going downstairs and visit him? And he's like, when I get out of this thing, I'm gonna fucking kill you. I think about that <laughs> all the, like yeah, twice a week at least. Bit. It fucking kills me. It's one of my yeah. favorite bits of his. On his new special, and I don't know when it comes out, but he's got this new special coming out. He does this routine about um, his wife, and he he she what they she wants him to get the morning after pill because they don't mm-hmm. want to have another baby, and he's got to go to the pharmacy to buy it. Yeah, and he goes now you and you know you've seen this thing a million times where you got to go buy rubbers. Uh, hey, hey, <laughs> what? How much are rubbers? The kid, you know. <laughs> but but this is a whole different level. Like hey, uh, you got the morning after pill. I had sex recently. We want to kill it. You know, <laughs> and, and, and and you know there's this unwritten thing between you and the and this lady at the counter. You're gonna right. go. You're gonna go kill the kid. Okay, here, here you go. Here. <laughs> take, take two. The kid's gone. You know, it's it's just fucking. It's so real. And That's you know, he, he, he's got a barbecue going at his house, and he and his wife sneak upstairs and fucking. And then she goes, "Go get the morning after pill." <laughs> you go, oh, are you serious? Well, okay, I need toothpaste anyway. You know. <laughs> That's fucking genius. He's a great guy. He's a really cool guy. Yeah. Um, well, listen, dude, I, I'm so glad. Thank you so much for coming on. I, I can't tell you how much My I pleasure. appreciate it. I My gotta pleasure. I gotta ask you the three questions we ask every guest. Um, first one is if you can go back in time and talk to your younger self, what piece of advice would you give yourself today to help you? Uh don't do drugs and alcohol. Solid advice. Good advice. Nice. It's, it's a it's a treadmill you don't want to get on. Yeah, absolutely. You're gonna have to get off eventually. Was it? How hard was it for you to get off of it? Really hard. Yeah. Um. Uh. Second question is, and this might be the same as the first. I don't know, but what had to end in your life, good or bad, for you to uh, lead you to where you are today? Yeah, I had to. I had to yeah. clean up. Yeah. I had to get my life together. You know. Hmm. Was I, there any- I, I, I was, you know, I got into this so young, right out of high school. Right. Yeah. And I just, I got, you know, I liked, you know, it was, everyone was so much older than me and it was so much, everything was so important and everything, life was so bigger than me, I felt, you know, everyone was so much better than me, you know, and yeah. it was just so much easier just to be high and drunk and, and uh, it was a mistake. Right. It's, yeah. it's so much better to go through life clear headed and sober. It's really a gift to be clean. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I know you. My, yeah, I lost one of my friends a couple of years ago died of a drug overdose and it was just brutal, obviously, but for like everybody and no one, you know, everybody just left wondering what they could have done. And and it's never it's never a, it's never an easy thing. It's fucking and I, awful. I, I've lost so many friends. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and, you know, I've just also had the benefit of, you know, I'm not a religious guy, you know, but I've, I've got a really spiritual life as a result of replacing that with um, drugs and alcohol. Did you, yeah. did you find creatively when you stopped that it was, it was fulfilling, more fulfilling? Well, at first I told myself it was a big mistake that, you know, I needed to be that messed up guy, but no, it's been much better. That's, that's I think that's what a lot of people need to hear. Cause it is a, it is a really, really bad fucked up stigma that if you stop doing the thing that's killing you, you won't be who you, you know, no, there's a power, there's a power in the universe. that's there for us to tap into. That's so much bigger than any kind of anything you can get from drugs and alcohol. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Um, and the uh, and the last question is tied into the show. So if this was a genuine dystopia, and it's the last day on Earth, alien zombies, comet heading toward the Earth, whatever your choice is, what would be your epic death? How would you want to go out? 
Oh, I probably would want a microphone stand just lanced right through my, right from my eye to the back of my head. And I just would want to be wandering around going, what the fuck hit me? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking awesome, man. Thank you so much, That's dude. Great. I really appreciate you coming All on. Right, Tom. Such Tom, a pleasure. You, so nice. It's really good. Thanks Thank for you. having me, you guys. I really Thank like you. the show. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, Thank man. Such a pleasure. Take care. Peace. Dystopia tonight.